Hello and welcome. Welcome to our live Discover Day at the University of Toronto Mississauga. My name is Emily Mancuso. I'm the Assistant Director for Student Recruitment here at Mississauga campus. We're delighted to welcome you today to our campus tour. I'd love to have my colleagues introduce themselves. Your tour guide today will be Ariane, who's a current UTM student. Ariane, would you like to introduce yourself? Yep. Hi, everybody. I'm Ariane, and I'm the current, uh, uh, currently a fourth year student at UTM, and I will be taking you on a tour of the UTM campus through my lens as a student. Fantastic. Thanks, Ariane. We look forward to your tour. We're also joined by our colleagues, Jess and Andrea, who's in the chat today from Student Residence. Jess, welcome. We'd love to have you introduce yourself as well. Yeah, of course. Hi, everyone. My name is Jess. I am the Communications Coordinator here at Student Housing and Residence Life. Um, and today I'm going to tell you um, all about residence and what our first year experience can look like. Fabulous. So we will invite you both back to the presentation just momentarily. Uh, for our guests, we know that we have a mix probably of some applicants for this year who may be current inbound students, as well as maybe some prospective students who are exploring their options at the University of Toronto. So we welcome both audiences. We have a number of colleagues who are supporting on the chat function today. We have Lewis, Melissa, Fatima, and Andrea who are behind the scenes helping to answer your questions that you may have. And, uh, you know, Ariane will take you on her tour of her personalized UTM. We'll then have Jess will walk us through a presentation and an overview of student residence on our wonderful campus. And we'll hang around for some Q&A afterwards. For those of you that are maybe offer holders at this time of year, there are also some fantastic resources that we'll probably signal to. So depending on your questions, we may encourage you to look at the new students website. We may encourage you to make sure that you're part of the Eagle Connect program as you're planning your uh, making your plans to join us this fall on campus potentially. And we'll be happy to answer any of those questions that you may have. So I wanna kick things off by starting by acknowledging the land on which the University of Toronto operates. So we wish to acknowledge the land, uh, the land on which the University of Toronto itself operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Senecas, and the Mississaugas. And today, this meeting place from which I'm presenting and from which my colleagues are presenting is still home to many Indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to present on this land. So I'm going to now hand things over to Ariane, and I'll see you all back when we're ready to chat further and answer those questions that you may have. Thanks, Ariane. Of course. So, um, one moment, please. Is everybody still able to see my screen? Okay, it seems it has stopped sharing. Uh, give me one moment, please. Uh, there we go. It's back now. Okay, so hello again, everyone. My name is Ariane, and I did mention earlier, I'm a fourth year student pursuing a double major in political science and French studies. So a little bit about me. I am a student ambassador campus events for student recruitment and admissions, which is a part of the work study program. I am also currently the president of the Filipino Student Association. And in my first year, I'm, I was very grateful to be able to find a community of Filipino students on campus. So I'll be talking more in depth about my campus involvement later on in my tour, as well as I'll be taking you through all the buildings where I love to go for food and where I love to study. So up first is the Kenef Center and Innovation Complex. So this is the Kenef Center and Innovation Complex. And before I was pursuing political science in French, I was actually enrolled in commerce in first year. And the reason is because I actually want to become a lawyer. And a fun fact about me is I'll actually be taking my law school admission test next month. And you know, I thought since there's no pre-law program, maybe I might wanna do corporate law. So I chose to apply to commerce. 
And then at the same time, while I was taking my commerce uh, requirements, I also took political science and French as my electives. And then it was during this time that I decided commerce was not for me and I decided to fully pursue po political science and French. So one of the courses I had to take was Eco 100, which is Introduction to Economics. And it was a very popular first year course. And it was held in this building, CANF 137. And it actually holds about 300 plus students per lecture. And not only that, I also took Poll 114, which is Politics in the Global World in this same lecture hall. And you know, who knew that my elective would lead me to pursue a major in political science? In this same building, you can also find the economics aid room. And this is where professors and teaching assistants or TAs, this is where they have their office hours. So I actually went here a lot in my first and second years because I was taking a lot of economics courses. Of course, this building is also home to the office of the registrar. And for any of our incoming students this fall, you actually have access to Ask Registrar, which is a portal where you're able to connect with an academic advisor, a student success representative, or a financial aid advisor. And I find that really talking to them is helpful because I, at the time, like in first year, I was switching my programs and I was also managing my OSAP loans, which I'm still doing today. And of course, you can find our office within this building as well. So I did mention I do work within campus events as a student ambassador, and I'm responsible for uh, allowing students to get to know what we do during campus events. So that may be orientation or exam jam. And then this past year, I was also responsible for community engagement. And you might have attended the previous events, which are like the UTM student panel, Ask Me Anything. And then on Instagram, on UTM Future, we also had this hashtag UT Minute, which is when we'll uh, talk to current students and ask them about how they leverage resources during their undergraduate experience. Past, I was also a tour ambassador for the office, volunteering some time out of my day to deliver tours to students and their families. So this was back when things were in person. And on our campus, you'll find that many of the buildings are connected. So let's now head to the Davis Building. So this is the William G. Davis building and it was recently renovated in 2019. You can find the Office of the Center for Student Engagement here or CSE. And when I was in second year, I actually worked as a peer leadership coach where I facilitated UTM lead seminars. Essentially, there are a series of leadership workshops where students can gain skills outside of the classroom. So if you participate in activities like this, you can earn a notation on your co-curricular record or CCR. And it's a document that summarizes your involvement throughout your undergraduate career. So they also organize a lot of events for students, one of which is something they call academic department orientations. So they do those for every program. And during orientation week, again, for those incoming first years, you might wanna look into this. I attended the commerce one when I was in first year and I learned a lot about how to leverage my resources to have a successful transition. You can also find the Career Center here. And what they do is they organize mock interviews and resume critiques. And you know, because I really was able to use this resource, I was able to go to their workshops. I earned skills which presented me as a strong candidate and I was able to get hired for work study jobs. Last but not the least, you can also find the Experiential Education Unit here. And they provide students with opportunities for learning outside the classroom. So the keyword here is experiential and uh, this past semester, I actually applied for an ROP or a research opportunity project. So what I applied for was FRE 399, which is um, about French language acquisition. So we'll be doing research on how languages like English and Mandarin, even Arabic, how they affect French language acquisition. So I'm very excited to do that research starting in the fall. And of course, this, wasn't, this wouldn't be a campus tour if I didn't talk about food. Of course, there's lots of choices, but my personal favorite is Bespoke Mongolian Grill, where you're able to customize your own food bowls. They have this super unique uh, coconut adobo sauce, which is developed by Chef Donna, who's Filipino like me. So let's now head to The Rock to learn more about the athletics facilities.
So this is the Recreation Athletics and Wellness Center, or the ROC. And this is actually where UTM hosted the Trillium Health Partners Vaccine Clinic in partnership with Trillium, as well as the region of Peel. And it actually closes today. Um, but other than that, it's an athletic facility. And before the pandemic, I was actually able to squeeze in a little bit of time for working out. And what's nice about this is that access to the facilities is actually paid for in your incidental fees, which are part of your tuition. So in order to access the facilities, all you need to do is use your T card. You can scan it or show a staff member and they'll be able to let you in. They also offer drop-in classes. And one of the ones I went to are yoga lattes. So they also have women's only hours. And this is when a portion of the gym is closed off and only those who identify as women are able to access it, which I've done in the past. And you know, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, they have moved their programming online, which you can still participate in. You can choose to participate in synchronous classes, which are live or on demand. And you know, whenever you're available and you have time, just access these videos during your free time. So up next, we'll be going to the CCT building. So this is the Communication, Culture, and Technology Building. And what you can find here is CC1080, which is actually one of the two largest lecture halls on campus. It holds a maximum of 500 students. So you might notice that classes in first year tend to be large. For example, I took MGM 101 in first year, which is Introduction to Management Functions. It's a very popular first year course. At the same time, a lot of students are trying to get into their preferred programs of study. So they are taking the same prerequisites. But even though they tend to be large, you do have the opportunity to interact with your peers and your TAs in your tutorials. So you can even go more in depth with the material and ask them for help. You can also find the UTM service desk here. And this is actually where I got my T card as well as how I set up my UToronto email. For those incoming first year students, you had to book an appointment remotely to get that set up and be able to enroll into classes. If you haven't done that yet, really recommend that you do it because you use your T card to access services like uh, bu the buses, shuttle, printing, all of that. And when you set up your UToronto email, that's actually how you get notifications from your courses and how your professors contact you. For now, let's head on over to the Hazel McCallion Academic Learning Center. This is the Hazel McCallion Academic Learning Center, more commonly referred to as the library. And what you can actually find here is that Starbucks is right across. So if ever you're studying at the library and you need to take a break, you can always just grab a quick cup of coffee. But the library is a really popular space to study. So a lot of, uh, I really recommend that a lot of students come early so that they can pick out a great spot. It's also open 24-7 uh, during exam season. So outside of regular operating hours, you would just have to show staff your T card so that they know you're a UTM student trying to use the facilities. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, the library actually now has a portal where you can reserve workstations or study spaces to use, especially if you don't maybe don't have a stable internet connection or if you don't have a quiet space available at home. So again, for incoming students might wanna check this out. Of course, you can also book a study room to study with friends, or if you're part of a club, you can have meetings in here. Right now, it is unavailable due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but hopefully it'll be available later on in the year. Um, actually, fun fact for me, I don't actually study in the library a lot, so I'll talk about my favorite study space later. But what I do love about the library is that I've been able to borrow lots of items from the information and loans desk. So one of them is course reserves. And in my second year, I actually didn't purchase a single textbook for any of my classes. All I did was borrow it through course reserves and you get your book for about two or three hours and then you'd have to return it. It was really great because I saved a lot of money and I was keeping on top of my work because I knew I only have this much time to do my work. And it, of course it helped a lot with my study routine. You can also borrow a calculator here. I took Mat 133 in first year, which is calculus for commerce. 
And if I ever forgot my calculator, I knew the library had uh, lots of extras. And if you're studying in the study room, so you, there's a whiteboard in there. So if you ever need whiteboard markers and eraser, you can definitely borrow from the library. Last but not the least, one of the coolest things I've ever borrowed from the library is an external DVD player. My personal laptop does not have a built-in DVD player and I was in a French film class in second year. So it was really nice that I was able to borrow this device for five hours. I was able to watch the film, do my homework and you know, be done with it. But now let's make our way to the instructional center. So this is the instructional center, and it actually is not affiliated with any academic departments. It's only a building full of lecture halls and lots of study spaces. So what you can find here is IB 110, which is another 500 seater hall, one of the two that I mentioned earlier. And the class I took in here was Mat 133, which is a first year calculus course for commerce. So as you can see right now, some spaces you cannot, like some seats you can't sit on to, uh, to use social, to abide to social distancing policies. You can also find the shuttle bus stop to go downtown here. So I personally didn't take any courses at U of T St. George, but I was able to make use of this anyway, anytime I was traveling downtown or I wanted to visit the St. George campus to study with my friends there. It is really convenient and a great benefit is that it's paid for already within your incidental fees in your tuition. So you don't have to pay additional fare every single time you use it. And it's exclusive for UTM students only. So if you were a U of T St. George student and you had classes to take at UTM, you could you can take this shuttle bus, but you do have to pay the fare every single time. Of course, lots of food options in IB. So they have Casado for burrito bowls. Subway, great place. And of course, they also have bento sushi here. One of the things I've ordered is a rice bowl and I was able to customize it. And there it is on the screen. Really great, really delicious. And you know, not that, pretty decently priced. So I want you all to get excited because I'm actually heading to my favorite building on campus, which is Manjue and Moanon. So this is Monjue and the Moen on or MN and the, the name is actually from an indigenous language and it means a gathering of minds. So this building is home to the departments of political science and language studies. And for me, I'm a huge advocate of going to professors and TAs office hours because I find that they're super helpful and I get to have this opportunity to discuss issues that I may be having with the material I'm learning in class. It's also a really great way to build relationships with your professors. The reason why I say this is because now I have, I'm have i fortunate to be able to work as a research assistant for the Department of Political Science, and I'm assisting my professor with her literature review, and her research focuses on homelessness in Canada. You can also find the Robert Gillespie Academic Skills Center here, which is a great resource for essay writing, study skills, etc., and they can help you at any stage of the essay writing process. So I usually come here for help with my political science essays, whether I'm just at the brainstorming stage or I just need to revise it. You know, if I ever get stuck at any point, they're always here to help. They also organize facilitated study groups, which are actually really common for first year courses. So what you do in these groups is that you're able to meet peers who are taking the same course as you, and it's led by students who have succeeded in these classes. So they're able to give you tips. And they actually had one for my FRE 272 course, which is about the structure of modern French and introduction of French linguistics course. And it was really great because the students who actually attend these, attend these study groups do 5% better than those who do not. A fun fact about this building is that it's actually been used as a Disney film set. So in the summer of 2019, I was giving campus tours to families and they were filming Zombies 2 at the time. So I was able to walk them through the set but actually they're back again this year and now they're filming Zombies 3. There's also lots of study spaces here and I feel very productive every time I'm in this building, especially during weekends too. I come to campus because classrooms are vacant 
And you can even watch a movie on the large projector screen. So I can do that while I'm doing my work. And yes, I'm the type of person that comes to campus even on weekends. So last about this building is that they actually have lots of active learning classrooms. So when I was in first year, I took UTM 195, which is curiosity and control. We talked about how voyages shaped the discovery of North America. And this is part of the UTM One Scholars Program as part of the CSE. And this year, the topics may have changed, but if any of you are taking a One Scholars course, it's really beneficial because there's only 25 students in your class. You're able to get to know your professor on a deeper level, and you get a lot, earn a lot of skills about research. So also this classroom, it's not your traditional classroom, opposed to like you have the professor at the front and then you have to project in order for everyone to hear you if you wanna say something in class. But here, the professor's in the middle and then you're all sat in groups of six. And then there's actually this like saucer looking thing in the middle, that's actually a microphone. So you don't have to project your voice anymore, you can just speak into the microphone. But now we'll be headed on over to the building connected to MN, which is Deerfield Hall. So this is Deerfield Hall, and there was actually a naming contest for when this building was first built. They took submissions from everyone in the community and a staff member actually suggested Deerfield Hall because very fitting of our campus. Of course, there's lots of deer you can find around this area. There's actually a field in front of this building. The, uh, students can actually play soccer or football there, but sometimes if it's not in use, deer hang out around there. And no matter how long you've been on campus, whether you're a staff student or faculty member, everyone always stops to have a look at the deer. What you can find in the Deerfield Hall is Math Learning Center. So I took a lot of, I took Math 133 in first year and I found it really difficult, but what helped a lot was my math learning skills in this center. So TAs have their office hours in here. It doesn't really matter what you're taking. Any TA from any course will be able to help you. And my profs also organize this like drop-in study hours. So if you we were struggling with an assignment or we had a big test you needed to prepare for, we, that was always available to us. There's also lots of study space in this building. So we've booked them sometimes for uh, meetings or if I wanted to just study for a study for a test myself, or if I was working on a project with my other classmates. Of course, UTM has not one, but two Starbucks on campus. So if you find that there's a long lineup at the Starbucks across from the library, you could always run to the one in Deerfield Hall. Now, our final stop of the tour is the Student Center. So the student center is the hub of all student life on campus. And what you can find here is the University of Toronto Mississauga Students Union or the UTMSU. So what they're actually doing right now is they're organizing FROSH, which is first year orientation. And I believe they even released what the theme of this year's orientation is. So again, first year students, check out their website if you wanna sign up for that. And they also you can also find here CFRE radio, which is our in-house campus radio. You can find lots of clubs and academic societies on campus. We have at least 120. Again, as I mentioned earlier, I'm part of the FSA or the Filipino Student Association. And what we've done is we've collaborated with other clubs to deliver events to students, ranging from meet and greets to all you can eat events. Uh, also, we've been able to collaborate with FSAs at other campuses. So that's St. George and Scarborough. And you know, when you're a UFT student, no matter which campus you go to, you can always be a general member of any of the clubs on other campuses. That's really cool. You can also find the Blind Duck here, Blind Duck Pub, which is connected to the student center. You can buy food here, they have halal options, and they also have cha time here. So cha time is a really popular shop to grab bubble tea. And of course, my favorite order is the cha time pearl milk tea. They also organize pub nights in here, one of them, and I remember in first year, I attended the Halloween one with my friends. We dressed up as cheerleaders and we won best group costume. And you can also pick up your My Way U passes at the Student Center, though the bus terminal is actually closer to the Davis building. 
So the U pass is already included in your incidental fees in your tuition. So anytime you want to ride a My Way bus, you just show them your U pass and your T card, and you don't have to pay fare every single time. So that actually brings me to the end of my campus tour. I hope everyone got to learn a little bit more about the UTM campus through my eyes as a current student. So I just wanna reiterate, there's so much that UTM can offer to you and I hope to see some of you this fall. So thank you once again for listening. And now I will be bringing Jess from Residence so she can talk to you about that. Amazing, thank you so much, Ariane. Uh, loved seeing your campus tour and hearing about all your experiences with UTM. So I am going to get started to talk about Residence. I'm going to give you a bit of an overview um, of what programming you can expect, the resident styles we have, and then a very um, overview look of how our application process works. So I do want to reiterate, as Emily said earlier, um, I am going to be speaking mostly to the 22 to 23 years. So if you're an incoming student, some of this information may not be as relevant um, to you, um, but I'll try my best to make sure I uh, say that distinction. So I'm going to start off my presentation by um, talking a little bit about why you might choose residence. Um, so according to an Academica study, um, it's actually shown that there's a greater retention to second year and graduation um, for those who live in residence. So it means that you're more likely to um, stay in the university longer and also make it all the way to when you graduate. Um, additionally, um, this year, but potentially next year, um, there is easier synchronous learning as you'll be in the same time zone on campus um, as your professors, um, so that is definitely a good benefit. You have access to an in-person community and programming, um, which makes it easier to make friends and have in-person connections. And you also have the opportunity to experience more independent living with your peers, with access to many of our resident services. For example, we have maintenance, um, a front desk and 24 7 365 support um, from student and professional staff. So um, those are all great things that you might want to have while you're here living on campus. Um, and another thing that you'll have access to is our wonderful residence programming, which is where I'm actually going to speak to next. Um, so for our residence programming, um, our, the first one I'm going to talk about is residence council. So Res Council is a student-led organization that actually represents the students' needs and interests in residence. Um, and they have lots of fun events. Um, this past year, they ran a Movember contest um, on Instagram. They do candy grams and bingo nights. They do lots of events to get students connected, but also have lots of programming. We do have a large orientation and frost week program in residence. So orientation is um, what you'll experience when you come to campus on move-in day. Frost week is actually an orientation or another week of programming that we offer once the winter break is over. And we have, uh, again, lots of great activities. We um, did Can I Kiss You one year. We have a residence fair for our student committees. We do coffee house, which is like performance type. Um, so we have lots of amazing orientation programming that happens there. Additionally, we have a few LLCs. They're called Living Learning Communities um, in residence where students in specific programs can choose to live with people who are in the same program and actually taking the same classes. Um, so for example, as you can see on the screen, um, we have a CCIT, a Living Learning Community, CompSci, a Foundations of Research, um, a LEAF LLC, which is more about environmental science, a global LLC and a life science LLC. So um, if you're interested in those, I highly recommend it. You are required to take a certain course. Um, uh, you're in, required to enroll in a certain course when you're in those LLCs, so just keep that in mind. But if you're interested in any of those topics, I highly recommend those. We also have our wonderful student staff who are always, always available to our support. Our dons, which are typically like your first friend in residence, are there for community building, support, creating connections with other people who live in residence. Our pals or they're also known as peer academic leaders, are like your academic support in residence. They help facilitate, facilitate your transition into university. Um, as we know that going from high school to university can be a bit of a transition for some folks. Um, so our pals actually help you out um, in making sure that you are connected to the right resources, that you know where to go, that you um, know when and where office hours there is and all those things. And last but not least, our RSAs um, work at our residence service desk. And they help a lot with the administrative support in residence. Um, they kind of do a lot of the logistics. If you have some facilities issues, they can help you with those um, and things like that. So we also have a lot of clubs in residence. So we have the artistic resource team, equity outreach network. We have a choir, 
Coleman Cup Sustainability. These are all com student led committees um, that are based on a topic. So for example, sustainability is about being sustainable in residence. They host lots of events and programming. Um, so if you are in residence, you are able to join those committees and actually be a part of um, helping make those events happen. And lastly, I do want to highlight, we do have a story um, that we highlighted last year, um, Isabella, who came to residence, um, and she kind of talks about the wonderful connections she made in residence um, and why she chose to live here. So if you're interested in that, you can check that out on our YouTube page. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to talk about is our residence styles. So again, I do want to mention that these residence styles I um, am going to show you are for the 2022-2023 year. So if you're an incoming student, they may not apply to you. Um, they may apply to you, but if you have more questions, I do um, encourage you to contact our resident services desk as they can probably give you more information that's relevant to this year. So the first that I'm gonna show you, um, these are our suite styles. So we do have a suite style single and a suite style double. Um, just for everyone's knowledge, a double means that two people will be living in the same bedroom. Um, so the suite styles come are like apartment-like units. They do have um, a kitchen, a common space. They have two bathrooms um, and four bedrooms. So just keep that in mind. We have layouts here, but we also have on um, tour videos, again, on our YouTube page, if you wanna check those out. But again, those were for the current year, so they may be changing for the upcoming. The next uh, set of housing I'm gonna show, so our traditional style single, which is in our Oscar Peterson Hall. That's actually the building that I'm currently in now. Andre and, our, Andre and I are coming to you live from that building. Um, so in this style of housing, there are two single bedrooms that are connected by a bathroom, kind of like a Jack and Jill style. Um, you are able to lock the bathroom from both the inside and outside, um, but there is no um, common, like common living rooms or kitchens available to you. There is a kitchen on the sixth floor of this building that the entire building shares. So just keep that in mind if you're um, considering any of these housing styles. And then we have McGrath Valley, which is a premium townhouse. It has two bedrooms in it, um, kitchen and common room, just like um, the town, uh, sorry, the apartment style. Um, but just keep in mind, some of the McGrath Valley units are doubled. So that means again, two people will be living in one bedroom. Okay, so next I'm gonna go through an application timeline. I took out the dates um, just so that students are, you're aware of what um, important dates and deadlines are, will be coming up if you decide to apply to residence. Um, so first we have step one, the residence guarantee application that is always due on March 31st. Um, so keep that in mind. There, you will need to make sure that you um, accept your offer of admission um, by a certain date. And then we also have a step two application again, Deadlines have not been set yet, but these three things are what you need in order to get the first year residence guarantee. So please keep that in mind and watch out for dates and deadlines um, as the up upcoming year uh, moves forward. After you do apply to residence, we will send a confirmation to let you know, yes, you have a space or if, for if any reason you have a waitlist number, we will send that as well. Another thing to keep in mind is when you pay your step two application, there is a 350 application fee. Um, and when you want to accept your offer into residence, there will be a 1650, could change, not sure yet, but acceptance deposit. Um, so just keep those in mind as well. Step one and step two can get confusing sometimes. So I thought I'd show you a quick um, photo of what it looks like. The only thing I will probably be changing is um, the years on this application. So as you can see, um, this first application says the residence guarantee 2021-22. Um, and then if we go to the next slide, you'll see another application that says UTM-undergrad academic year. So this second application is important because this is when you'll indicate that you want to live at UTM. Um, so make sure you do get your um, step two application in by the deadline if you really want to come and live with us. Okay, so the last thing I'm gonna go through is actually our residence fees. So again, these are the 2021, 2022 year um, fees, but I wanted to show it to you so that you can kind of understand what it looks like. Um, as you can see, um, all the fees are listed there. It is not including meal plans. So for those of you who may be curious, in residence, it is mandatory to have a meal plan, um, but the fees or the prices for those meal plans are not included in this slide right now. Um, so you will need to look at the meal plan office or look at the meal plan office's website um, if you're curious as to what those look like. Another thing I want to highlight is I mentioned a 350 and 1650 um, 
payment that you'll have to do before moving in. Um, if you do pay those on time, um, you'll know those actually will be used towards your residence fees. So you actually will not, um, those will be like added to a credit in your account. Um, so if, for example, if you're living in McGrath Valley in a double room, it's cost six thousand, sorry, seven thousand six hundred and fourteen dollars. If you actually take out take out that two thousand, um, you only owe around five grand left. So just something to again keep in mind: you would have already contributed some of your residence fees before moving into uh, before move-in day. Um, so something you can keep in mind for when you're planning your payments. Okay, so that's actually the end of my formal presentation. Um, I, we're probably going to go through a Q&A, but I do want to give you all the information you may need to contact us. Um, so you can email us at resdesk.utm at utoronto.ca. Um, you can call us by phone at 905-828-5286. And you can live chat with us um, on our website at www.utm at utoronto.ca slash housing. Um, we do have our lovely uh, RSAs who work at the desk. They'll be able to answer your questions as long as our live chat is there. Um, and I also encourage you to connect with us on social media. Um, we do post lots of content and you can see what the programming we do throughout the year, some of our dates and deadlines. Um, so if you're interested, you can follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook um, at UTM Residence. And that's the end of my formal presentation. So I'm going to call back Emily and Ariane and we're probably gonna answer some questions for you folks. Thanks so much, Jess. That was a fantastic walkthrough and overview of the residence community and um, what those steps will look like for our prospective students. And thank you, Ariane. It was a pleasure to tour your UTM. Despite the fact that we're all members of this community, it's always amazing to hear the unique uh, things that people find that are special to them at UTM. And then I had to take note of trying the Mongolian Grill the next time I am on campus. So I'm very excited about some of the things that you pointed out that would be even new to me as a community member. Thank you so much to Louis, Melissa, Fat Fatima, and Andrea, who are behind the scenes, who've been doing a great job answering questions. We welcome you to start to pose any questions that you may have, especially for Jess and Ariane. I also wanted to point out the fact that I think we're 100% U of T graduates on the chat as well as on the call. And we're about like 95% UTM graduates specifically. I think I'm the only person who is a St. George graduate uh, and everyone else here is a UTM grad. So lots of great ambassadors and insights here. So I did also wanna to signal to a few important resources that I saw come up a few times through our chat feed here. There were quite a few questions about fees as well as deadlines and different awards. So I can see one of our most recent uh, responses to a question is a link to the award explorer. If you are exploring what the costs look like to study on any of the three campuses, as well as the awards that are available to students, we recommend that you check out the award explorer.utoronto.ca where you'll be able to see the different types of awards that are available to both domestic and international student, as well as there's a fantastic fee calculator that's available to prospective students that can give you a sense of what the costs associated with paying coming to U of T might look like. And then we had quite a few questions about applications and where you'll find general guidance and general admissions. And my colleagues will link that as well on where you can find the deadlines as well as the application requirements and guidelines. We hope that this live session is the first of many sessions that you may attend with us. So we do host deeper dive presentations on how to apply to UT, hoping that you're applying to UTM specifically as well. So we do encourage you to check out our Discover UTM website where you'll also find some on-demand presentations that might help support some of the questions I saw at the very beginning that we're asking about um, things like programs of studies and what the requirements may have looked like. So I don't see a lot of questions coming through. I'm gonna also um, signal to one other set of tools that might support some of the questions that we did see previously. I saw a great question from a student who looks like an inbound student who was asking about how they find uh, what building the initials are associated with as they were, um, they've registered for a course in the DV building. So did wanna point out the fact that we do have a U visit virtual tour on our website, as well as a campus map that can help complement this wonderful session and can complement those spaces that Ariane pointed out specifically as well. 
So there's a great question here from Shreya, which is asking, what is the process to get a U of T email? So that's a great question, Shreya. If you are a newly admitted student to U of T, you should have received some communications as well as been invited to the Eagle Connect program, where you'll get some guidance on the necessary steps to activate your UTOR ID, as well as to follow the process for getting your email all set up. So be sure to check out the Eagle Connect program as well as the pre-arrival student communications. Now, Arian, I have a question for you because you chatted a little sure. bit about this. For our inbound students who wanted to know a little bit more about things like orientation or what those next steps are, what's your advice in terms of how they can find information about kind of pre-arrival and where orientation may be hosted and what, what resources they may have available to them at the UTM campus? Right, so definitely check out the new students website. That's your first step because they have an entire section that highlights all of the different orientation events that you can attend. There's one that organized for like international new to Canada students. Um, there's one organized by the Center for Student Engagement, which I mentioned in my tour. They have this thing called O Week, and they do like academic department orientations as part of that. So no matter what program you're in, there is an ADO for you. Uh, there's also the UTMSU Frosh, which I mentioned earlier as well. So they have a website that explains solely about orientation. I think it's utmsuorientation.ca maybe. Um, but I definitely know for sure that the Instagram handle that they have specifically for orientation is UTMSU orientation. So they've released the theme, they have giveaways, and there's always like upper year students who are going to be the Frosh leaders. So if you have any questions about like what will look like this year they'll de de you should definitely contact them thank you so much for that excellent advice i see michelle also had a question here in the chat too and she was asking about you know where she can find more information about clubs and associations so the link has been shared with where she can do that research but ariana as a current student who has been quite active on campus what was your experience like as a new student navigating how to find which clubs to join and how to um, you know, really explore the options that are available to you. Yeah, so back when things were in person, there was this thing called Welcome Week, also organized by the UTMSU. And clubs and academic societies had the opportunity to table all over campus, because again, there's at least 120 of them. And you were just able to talk to student executives, student leaders, and ask them, what's your club about? Like, what are you looking for? What can I do as part of this club? So that was really helpful. But I understand um, it's unsure whether things will be in person or online. Um, back at, like last year when they had like Welcome Week, it was mostly on, it was completely online. And what they did was they highlighted all of the student clubs on their Instagram. They did like a mini spotlight. They even did Instagram lives. So as long as you follow them and like keep up on, um, their posts, you can really check out which clubs you want to be part of. And I did see in the chat, someone did mention like the UTMSU website also lists all of the clubs available on campus. So that's a really great resource as well. Thank you so much for that. And just briefly touching on something that you mentioned, um, and there was a question about this in the chat, what was your experience like last year with clubs and associations and um, community engagement in an online format? So any kind of tips or experiences or insights from the online delivery of, of co-curricular activities? Yeah, I would say um, it was still pretty great because for us, like especially with the Filipino Student Association, I did touch that we were able to collaborate with uh, the associations at the other campuses. So that's just only two of them. But our club itself was also part of like this larger umbrella. And we were able to meet other FSAs from other universities like McMaster, Carleton, even University of British Columbia. So you, by joining clubs, like you really have this opportunity to meet so many students from all over. And I really want to emphasize that, like, just because you're a UTM student, like, you really do have boundless opportunities being at participating at other clubs on other campuses. And again, like, I really want to emphasize Instagram, like, as a great resource too, because that's how a lot of the clubs have been promoting themselves. And they, they really look for students that way. So if ever you're interested in a certain topic, just type it on Instagram and you'll be able to find them because there's so many new clubs that have been created this past year. There's always something there for everyone. Thank you so much for those insights. That's fantastic. Just quick high level question for you. There, ha there was one question about where a student can find some guidance and I'm guessing this is for an inbound student 
on quarantine protocols and sort of quarantine practices for this year? So obviously this is unique to our current inbound students, but are there some tools and resources that you can signal to for those students who might wanna research or know a little bit more about quarantine? Yes, of course. So if you um, are looking to quarantine here when you arrive in Canada, U of T does have um, a tri-campus quarantine program. Um, we can link it in the chat for everyone to see so you can um, learn more about it. Um, one thing to note is there is like an SAQ page that the uh, student provost team has created. I highly recommend reading through that um, as it is pretty detailed and gives you lots of information of what um, it might be, what it might look like arriving to Canada as an international student. Um, one thing to note is uh, the quarantine program and residence are two separate things. Um, so we do help students if they're going to quarantine at the downtown hotel, we do coordinate to make sure that you get to residence safely and that we know you're coming. Um, but in terms of like booking the actual quarantine space um, and things like that, I do encourage you to contact the quarantine program. Um, their email is info.quarantine at utoronto.ca. I will say that they are quite busy right now, um, as lots of students have lots of questions about quarantine, so if they don't get back to you um, right away, that doesn't mean that um, they won't. Um, just give them a little bit of time, and I'm sure they'll get back to you as soon as they can. So thank you so much just for that answer. I can see that your wonderful colleague Andrea has followed up with a link to that Vice Provost website. And I also can't emphasize enough how uh, wonderful and useful those FAQs are. So as just mentioned, they might be a little bit busy in responding to individual emails. However, quite a few of the frequently asked questions are addressed in a pretty uh, high level of detail on that website. So be sure to check that website out. Now circling back to a question that I saw quite a while ago in the chat, we had a great question, I believe it was from Fatima, who was asking about purchasing books and accessing the bookstore. So Ariane, I wanted to throw this one out to you in terms of advice on how students can prepare or what they don't potentially need to prepare before arriving to campus in terms of their books and so forth. So the reason why I say don't prepare, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that it's my understanding, you know, many students will wait until they attend their first class until they get that course outline and then start to make those purchases, but would love to hear from you as a student what your experience and advice is. Yeah, um, as a first year student, I got the same advice from upper years. They told all told me, do not buy your textbook until the first day of class because the professor will go through the syllabus and they'll really tell you, I remember in my math class, they were they told us, do not buy the textbook. It is available in the bookstore, but I will make it available on Quirkus. Quirkus is also like our course website. So it was really convenient because I was like, wow, like he's telling us to save money. So that was great. And I didn't have to buy it and I could just access it online. So that was an option we had. And um, there are other professors who do tell you, so this is the textbook listed for our class. You know, please purchase it as soon as possible. Or sometimes before even class starts, they'll tell you, uh, please purchase this book. We will go over these sets of pages on the first day of class. So it really depends on the professor you have. Some of them have pref preferred to use the textbook. Some of them don't. It really depends. But uh, I really do recommend like uh, you do have so many options from buying textbooks at the bookstore. So you are able to purchase new or used or rent new or used textbooks. Rent means at the end of the semester, at the end of the year, depending on if you're course is a full year or only a one semester course, then that's when you return it to the bookstore. And the bookstore, if you buy a textbook and you want to sell it back to them, they also have a buyback option. So you can always get your money back some way, shape or form. Excellent advice right from a current student. So glad to hear that some of that information is still still um, the same and then certainly great to hear your perspective. Thanks for that, Ariane. Also wanted to circle back to another question that I did see in the chat as well from it sounds like an inbound student who was curious to know about a fee payment that they had made to UTM and they wanted to track receipt of the payment. So I did want to signal to students who are inbound who are looking to track the progress of payments that they've made and whether or not they've been received, your join U of T I D um, once that once you become an accepted student becomes your same login details for our ACORN system that you'll become quite familiar with as a student at U of T where you'll be able to track things like your uh, electronic transcript, course registration, which by now many of you would have already been engaged with. And then in there, there's also a student accounts function where you should be able to monitor the progress of any payments that have been received and that are posted to the student account system. So should you have any other questions, there's a great live chat function on ACORN as well as a great 
query function where you can pose a question directly to student accounts. So hope you find that helpful. So I don't see many more questions specifically coming through uh, relative to the topic of the student focused tour today or on residents specifically. I will welcome Ariane and Jess to share some kind of closing advice and closing remarks. And then we'll certainly signal to some ways that you can stay in contact with us and follow up with detailed questions that you might have that are a little bit out of the scope of what we're presenting on today. So Ariane, happy to invite you to share some advice and remarks on things that you think might be helpful off the back of this event. Yeah, so my first advice is, I know it can be a little bit tough from the transition from high school to university, and you might feel like you have so many courses, you don't have time for anything else. But I really, really highly encourage that right off the bat from first year, you apply for an executive position at a club or you get involved in some way, shape or form, because at the end of first year, right when they get into second year, a lot of students always say, I regret not being involved in first year. So you don't wanna have that same regret. You should definitely be involved right away in your first year. And my next advice is um, depend, like even if things are, whether they're in person or online, I really do encourage that you take the time to review some resources that you'll be able to leverage. So whether that's any of the ones we talked about during this uh, seminar today, or whether that's uh, something that you're emailed about, like really do, take the time to review those and talk to upper years, maybe even apply for a mentorship program. There are so many resources that you can use that will definitely ease your transition to university. Thank you for that awesome advice. I have to agree over the course of my career when I'm speaking to upper year students, when you ask them what advice they have for incoming students, more often than not, it's about maximizing those social interactions, the community that they're part of and being involved right from the start. So thanks for that advice, Arian. That's excellent advice. And Jess, you know, your presentation had some incredible um, highlighted detailed information about what students can expect when they're researching coming to UTM. You also signaled to some great resources for where students can be in contact and look into more detail on our website. Any advice off the back of working again with current students on things perhaps that are helpful to know while students are researching their experience. You know, one thing that comes to mind is right at the beginning of your presentation, you spoke to the important aspects of why residents should be a consideration for all of our future prospective students. Would love to hear from you, um, your closing advice and closing remarks. Yeah, um, you actually took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say, I know not everyone thinks that living in residence is an option. Even if you live five minutes away, we definitely have students who decide to come live with us. Um, as Ariane said, it's great to try new things when you're coming to UTM. Um, obviously the transition is tough. Um, residence is here to help make that transition a lot easier. So again, we have PALS who are great academic support if you need that. And we also have Dons who are able to build community. Um, as myself, I lived in residence in my first year and I definitely did not look back. Um, so if you're interested in being able to access a community right at your doorstep, um, live with people who are in the same situation as you starting their first year, probably new to Canada, um, I very much encourage you to um, consider residence. Again, it doesn't matter where you come from or how close you live or um, where you grow up. We accept everyone and um, I really encourage you to consider it at least. Um, one advice I would give is if you're um, thinking about applying, if you're a little scared about not knowing all the proper information and things like that, um, UTM residents, we will host more events on our own um, to make sure that you get all the information that you might need. So I would, uh, my piece of advice would actually be check your email. Um, sometimes you may not think that the email applies to you or that you want to read it, but I highly encourage you to read all your emails um, as sometimes we include any sessions we may be hosting, dates and deadlines that might be important to you. Um, so that's just a little piece of advice. Excellent advice there as well. And I also wish to echo Jess's advice, which is stay in touch. Be sure to watch your emails for upcoming events that we might be hosting. The last link I'm gonna to ask to share, and we've already shared this with you, is the Discover UTM website. You'll find lots of on-demand content. You'll find a listings of all of our upcoming events and then some great uh, content to explore different subjects. Like if you're looking to research programs of studies, admissions requirements, Again, linking to important campus partners like student residence and student life, that is your one-stop shop for UTM. 
So thank you so much to my co-hosts, to Jess, to Arianne for taking us on your personalized tour. Thank you to Lewis, Melissa, Fatima, and Andrea in the behind the scenes who've been answering all of those questions. And thank you to all of you who've tuned in today. We really appreciate your questions and your engagement, and we look forward to hosting you again at UTM.